I, I made such a commitment at that time in the love of God that, that I read in, that, in the book of John. So John is talking to us about many things. And so uh, some of the things that we had maybe have had mis, uh, 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 concepts about, and God wants to uh, give us the truth of these things. And so John really hits them head on. And he says this, John, 1 John 2.18 says, Little children, it is the last hour. Oh, my goodness. So we need to come to the understanding of what does he mean? It is the last hour. Well, the last hour has been from the time Christ Jesus resurrected, resurrected from the grave, went into the heavenly into the heavenly realm before into the holy of holies and put his blood on the mercy seat seven times and made blood covenant with Father God, his blood, and uh, we're in that new covenant covenant now, and that now the last days began. And what is the last days? It's the Sabbath. It's, it means, the Sabbath means this, is that uh, they're resting and the word is working now, that we are to enter into the rest of, of letting the word now work, that through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, that uh, he defeated the enemy and he took back what the devil had stolen from us. And now, and, and he set us up to live a life of blessings. He dealt with the curse totally, paid it in full, and now, we are to live in what he has done. It is what he did. It's his works, and I'm to receive them. So in the new covenant, I'm in the Sabbath rest. It's not dependent on me. It's dependent on him. It's dependent on me believing the word. It's dependent on me receiving it and letting it flow through me. It's dependent on me taking his yoke on me. Hallelujah. And so... So understanding we've been in the last days <laughs> since uh, Christ Jesus resurrected. We are in the Sabbath day, the, the way where the word is to work, the new covenant. Hallelujah. See, the old covenant was a, was a covenant between you and God, and, uh, and we couldn't keep it. We're imperfect beings, so it failed. But now it's between God and Jesus, and now it's based on what he has already done, and I'm to receive it. And so, uh, so understanding this, okay, that we understand we are in the last days. We're in the last time, the last hours after his resurrection. And uh, so the scriptures say this, and <laughs> hallelujah. So let's turn, let's talk about this. You know, when we got first saved, I got saved. I mean, the Holy Spirit was working on me. I went to a Bible study. They told me about salvation. I prayed that night, had a supernatural experience with God. And anyway, uh, and so finally, after about a month, I, t I got Dr. Tom to go to the church that the Bible study women told me this was a church to go to. So we went there, but at this time, it was 1972, and at this time, it was all about the Lord was coming any day. And so they had the charts up that Sunday night, up about all everything that fits into place, and this is the day he's going to come. And, uh, and so it was, you know, kind of, Frightening. Are you ready to meet Christ? You know, and they had a date and everything. And I'm all in. Dr. Tom on the way home said, oh, okay, what do I need to do to be saved? So he got saved that night. And then, <laughs> praise God. And so now every day we get up, we look outside the window. Is this the day? Is he coming today? And we were so excited. We tell all our neighbors we had this certain book that was going around that was showing us in the book of Revelations. This is the time. This is the hour he's coming. And so we'd hand that book out. We read the book. I mean, at that time, we oh, he's coming any day. Why take pictures? Jason was a baby. We have no pictures of him. Because Jesus is coming. And Jesus like now, he's like, you have all these pictures of Scott. I don't have it. You don't understand, Jason. Jesus was coming. 
okay? <laughs> Dr. Tom sold his collection of coins that he had been collecting since he was eight years old. I mean, hey, let, let's live it up. Jesus is coming, you know? So let's use that money. And, and uh, so anyway, <laughs> so but one of the funny things was that we were handing this book out, and the book was so... Uh, I mean, it just, it was like, it it sounded real, and so many people were getting saved when they read the book, so God did good in the book. But this, this family here, we gave them the book, they read the book, they came over, and they said, we read the book, and we said, yeah, well, okay, they thought it was a good book. Well, that night, in this little town of Orfordville, when the siren went off in the night to say a storm was coming, but it didn't stop. It went on all night, this siren going, siren going. And so the next morning they come over, they said, we thought Jesus was coming. We jumped out of bed and we got saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it was a fun time. But when it was all over with, the time came, the day happened, it didn't happen. We were like, no, nah, we're not going down that, that road again. And there's been many of those days. I mean, but they can many, many times be fear-driven where we all oh, we got to collect all this food and, and we got to be ready and and uh, we don't want to be moved by fear. So let's see what the word says about the coming of the Lord. Well, let's look to Matthew 24, 36 through 39. And this is, you know, talking about Christ, talking about his return. And he said, but about the day and the hour, no one knows the day and the hour. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son. You mean Jesus doesn't even know? Nope, doesn't know. But only the Father. As it was in the day of, days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the day before the flood, people were eating and they were drinking, they were marrying, getting married, up, up to the day Noah entered the ark. Now you have to understand, I got to stop here and say, I'll continue on, I'll come back to it. Okay, he got in the ark. And they knew nothing about what, what would happen until what? The flood came and took them away. That is how it will be in the coming of the sun. So what is he saying here? The time is in God's hand. You don't know. He owns the time. That is in our everyday living, okay? I, I was thinking about this. That in our life, Dr. Tom had been associate pastor of a, of a large church and laid the foundation from day one of that church. And, and God had visited me and said we were going to have a church, but I don't know when. I don't know. We're on the road uh, ministering in the mid Midwest. We got back. And when we got back that Sunday, people were telling us in the church we had a church. We didn't even know we had a church. And so... We didn't know the day, the time, the hour. We found out then we have a church. And the pastor that had a church, a building, you know, a little house, tiny house, you couldn't raise your hand, you know, and Dr. Tom could, part, the ceiling was right there, but praise God. And he had had a nervous breakdown and turned it over to, uh, to us. And so we didn't know. Now we have a church. Now, look at what God did. But God had already told us, but we didn't know the time, the date. We didn't have a clue, okay? Then, 30 years later, as you see this building, we're in France. We're ministering. We were then, we were uh, just praying and seeking God, just, just enjoying God, just having fellowship with him. And then what happens? God says, it's over. It's time to turn the church over to uh, uh, the your, your sons at their time, and it's time for you to, to now cover the earth with the word of grace and flooded us with the anointing. This is our new season. We didn't know. We didn't know the timing. We weren't expecting that. And so we have to realize timing is in God's hands. All right? 
And so many times, hope defer makes a heart sick because we decide when the time's going to be. I mean, right now in our life, God, uh, we're selling our home because we're building word for winners, and that's what we're doing. And God told us, He said, you know, uh, um, now, you know, put this, get this house done, get it ready. He told us in the fall, and uh, the the buy, I'm bringing the buyer. He's coming, and it's time to put it on the market. We put it on the market. Okay, so we, our timing is now. Oh, I see it done now. Hello? Four months later, where is the, I mean, and people keep going through, okay? I mean, our lead pastor, Kelly and Jason, didn't even get their house on the market and was sold. And then Scott and Holly got their house sold. Is there something wrong with us? What's wrong with us? Are we poor decorators? What is it? But you know what happens is that realize through faith and patience you inherit the promise. Timing is the Lord's. And when you try to, to figure out the timing, you will set yourself up the whole hope defer makes your heart sick. So you need to let the timing be in the Lord. Now, I say the scripture, God hastens to fulfill his word. And, and he sent his word. And so he's hastening to do it. But he'll do it in his timing, right? But the buyer he chose. Well, you think about Noah. I just got to talk about this, okay? Okay, the flood coming. God put Noah in the ark seven days before it flooded, before the rains came. Now, he doesn't know what day it's going to flood. He thought when he got in the ark, I thought he thought, well, now the flood's coming. One day went by, two days went by, three days went by, four days bye-bye. Now he's like, okay, did I hear from God? Did I do something wrong? Am I, should I be in here? Should I even build the ark? You know how the enemy puts all these testimony, uh, the, uh, uh, all these words in your, your head and thoughts, and that he tries to get you to quit, to throw in the towel. He was trying to get Noah to get out of the ark. Just get out. It's not going to flood, right? You can imagine the people. Oh, yelling and screaming while Noah's on the ark. Oh, no, there's no flood. There's no water, Noah. Noah's crazy, Noah, right? Okay. Timing. We have to get this done. Down. Timing is the Lord's. It's not yours. So I want to bring more scriptures to show you this, and that is the return of Christ. It's not yours to know. Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back, okay? So it says this in Acts 1-6. Uh, Jesus had been, he ascended, uh, uh, wait, he resurrected. Now he walked with them for 40 days, telling them about the new covenant, telling them about the kingdom, telling about these things. And now it's about time that he's going to ascend. And he's telling them, now you need to stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost comes. Now, he doesn't tell them when the Holy Ghost is going to come. But we know it was 10 days after because it was on the day of Pentecost, all right? And so they say to Jesus, now, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, that's Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of, of Israel? Okay, and what does Jesus say? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times. What? It is not for us to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. So God is, Jesus is saying here, times and seasons are in God's authority. The season of your life, the journey that you're on. Yes, in the natural, there's, you know, there's harvest time, there's, there's winter, there's fall, there's summer. But in the in, in our journey and the different seasons of our life, you know, he's in charge of that. God says, I'm, I, that's my authority. It's not yours. Otherwise, we have all authority. But right there, he owns that. 
All right? And so this scripture says this. He answered, this is Jesus, the Father is the one who sets the fixed dates and the times of their fulfillment. You are not permitted to know. What? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not permitted to know the timing of all that he has prepared by his own authority. Okay? Settle down. Let go of the control. So what am I supposed to do? I'm in the last days. I'm in the Sabbath rest. There's the second coming of the Lord. Well, what does the word tell me to do? Well, the word says, be ready. Think of the ten virgins. It tells us in, Ma in Matthew 25, 1. He said uh, they weren't ready. Well, every day, be ready. If the Lord comes today, I need to be ready. I need to have enough oil, right? No, I'm ready for the Lord to show up. What is it? Another scripture says this. I think it's Matthew. Let's see what it is. That says... All right, Luke 19, 13. So he called the 10 of the servants, delivered to them 10 minutes, and said to them, do business till I come. Okay, so what, what are we to do? We're to be busy about our destiny, about the business God has called us to do, about the, the, the journey that God has called us to do each day. I'm to be busy. All right, and then... Matthew 25, 13 says, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. What? I don't, oh, I won't know the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. No. Let it go. Don't go in fear. He's coming back. Everything will be fine. So I just need to do what God said. I don't know the time. I don't know the day. I don't know the year. I don't know. But what I do know is I'm to be ready every day, ready for Jesus. I'm to be watching, and I'm to be busy in what he's called me to do that day. That's what God has called me to do. And so when you hear these fearful things and these books and, and how he's going to come, and you know what? And, you know, read Revelation. That's fine and get Revelation. But don't try to figure it out because you won't know and you're going to go off into some weird things and do weird stuff like us. No pictures <laughs> of Jason. Hallelujah. It's embarrassing as a mother too, you know. I was a good mother, really. Jason, I was really good. I did not favor Scott over you. It has nothing to do with that. Jesus was coming. You don't understand. Okay? <laughs> so John is talking about this right here. We read this about Paul. Paul talks about we're in the last days. John is talking about we're in the last days. We are still in the last days, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So now, the next thing John is going to talk to us about is... Uh, the Antichrist. Now, we need to get this straight in our head again. So he said, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. So from the time of the resurrection of Christ, John is talking about the Antichrist is there. It's, it's not a person. It's a movement. And that movement still goes on today. Antichrist is only mentioned in 1 John, not, not another book. So in Revelation, what do you hear about the last times? There's the beast. He gets wounded. Then there's the second beast. Then you hear about the dragon, right? Okay. And in Matthew, you hear about the false prophets. So these are the things that you do hear. And... Uh, and so Matthew 24 through 25 talks about the end times uh, uh, things. You know, and it does say when you see the fig tree uh, have leaves, you know, you, know, you know the time is close, okay? But, you know, things happen, but be busy. 
be ready and watch. And, and that's what God's called us to do, right? Hallelujah. So anyway, so the Antichrist. So uh, they are the people that oppose Christ. So it had to be when Jesus Christ resurrected because now it's about the anointing. Christ means the anointed and it's Jesus. So they're against, they're against the, the movement of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, they lead people astray. Um, they separate them from the true community of believers. Uh, only uh, place that the Antichrist is mentioned, I said First John and uh, Okay, so what do we do? How do we not get into that movement? Well, the Bible says those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. That it's very important that I don't forsake my assembly of, of myself as the manner of some are doing. But I need to be sure, and I'm in church and I'm watching it online right now because of what's going on. But I'm still a part of the community. And that, that I'm, I'm built on, on the word of God. I'm built on his word and reading it, meditating on it, and I, and I keep myself under the generals of the body of Christ. I keep myself under the pastor and the church that I know God has called and desire, and, and I stay with the word, right? And hallelujah. Well, they're try, are they trying to tell me I'm done? No, I'm not. I got five minutes. So, okay, hallelujah, praise God. So, let's get back. So, we don't get in fear. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We're not anti the anointing. We love being baptized in the Holy Spirit. We love the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we love the Holy Spirit now is our guide. He's the spirit of truth that will lead us in all truth. So, I'm not in fear. Hallelujah. Don't be in fear. He's not given you that spirit of fear. Hallelujah. But a power of love and a sound mind, right? So then, hallelujah. I got four more minutes. Let's see if I can get uh, through this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. And then 1 John 1.19 says this. And he's talking about the divine connections for God's purpose. And so he's helping us to understand, helping people to just settle down. Okay? And this is what he says. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not have, uh, con they would have continued with us. But they went out from us, right? They might that they may that it might be manifested that none of them were of us. What is he saying here? This is what he's saying here. In in a church, there is a community of people in that church born again, and this is a family that God has put together. Divine connections for His purpose of that church. Now, there are times when people come into the church. Because that body, that fellowship needs to have what that person has, that they're like a specialist in a certain area, and maybe we don't have that. And so they come in, and they mentor us, and they teach us, and it was just, wow, it was just what we needed to, to have and to be mentored in, and then they're gone. Well, they're gone because we're not their family. They're of the family of God, but they have their place that God has called them, the divine connection God has called them to do. All right? And so he's saying to, uh, to them is, don't take it personal. Hello? Right? He's saying that they came, they imparted something to us. They love the Lord, right? But now they're gone, not because there's something wrong with us, don't get into abandonment. Don't get into rejection. Don't get into offense. Know that, you know, they need to be led by God. And we need to celebrate them to go on to where they need to be. This church was called of God or what word for winner's ministry or whatever the ministry is. There's a, those divine connections that God puts to be a part of that family. Hallelujah. 
And those that come and then they go, they weren't a part of the family. And that's okay. They have their place. Hallelujah. I better quit. Time is up. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping you as we're going through the book of First John and coming to understand what, what uh, things that John made us look at and face. And let's understand what he's trying to say to us. So that we're not, every time we hear a teaching, Jesus is coming in, in, in a month from now or two months, and you better buy all this food, and this, this food will last you five years or whatever. And the fear, like, oh, my goodness, there's not going to be any water to drink, no food to, no food to eat. And, and, and Stop it. Don't do that. Say, nah, hallelujah. Holy Spirit will take care of me. Am I making sense? Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you, don't get into the fear of it. You don't know when he's coming. Hallelujah. They did say this generation would not pass away. You know, what happened, I think it was in, in 1940, something like that. And so we're holding on to that one, but we don't know when. He might come tomorrow. Hallelujah. So Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, let us understand that you said Jesus, and you said it several times, the timing is God's, and the seasons are God's, and we don't know, and he's not going to let us know. So we need to be rest, we need to be in faith, we need to be in patience, and uh, let, let it happen when it's his timing. Hallelujah, Father God, now. And that, Lord, now in the name of Jesus, pray with me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me my sins. And I ask you to come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, you are now a child of God. You need to call in. There's somebody there that wants to pray for you and help you through your decision. We love you. Hi. I'm Shelly, and I'm Dr. Tom and Maureen Anderson's executive assistant of over 17 years. These are real people that God is using to get supernatural results. They are in the Word of God studying all the time. Believe me, they go on vacation and they study the Word of God. And when they study that much, God gives them the wisdom, the mysteries, the revelation that we need as the body of Christ. He's put on their hearts to take the word of grace and truth to the nations, to the world. And I'm so blessed to be a part of this ministry. And my life is so blessed because I've seen countless miracles in my life and I've seen countless miracles in other people's lives through this ministry. This is the kind of ministry I want to be connected to forever. Don't you 